Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flow Joe. So today we're going to be looking at the power to make Flow actions do until. So what does Microsoft say do until does? Well, do until executes a block of actions until a specified condition evaluates to true. So what does this actually mean then? Well, each item will trigger a set of actions before moving on to the next item that will trigger those same set of actions. However, before we move to that next set of actions, we're going to check a condition. So let's say we've got a variable of number and number is set to zero. And then we want to check if zero is equal to two. So we say, does zero equal to two? No, run this set of actions. Then we do plus one on our number. So then we've got one. So then we'll say, does one equal to two? No, it doesn't run a set of actions. Okay, let's add another one to our number variable. So now we've got two as our number variable. Then we're going to say, does two equal to two? Well, it does. So we're going to stop. So unlike apply to each where it will cycle through everything, we can actually set a particular value to stop at. And this is a way of iterating through data. And let's move on to what it actually looks like on Power Automate then to see what this means. Well, when you first add the action to Power Automate, you'll see this do until box and it says choose a value is equal to choose a value. Slightly confusing if you've never seen this before. However, the first choose value is setting the actual value. So let's say where you was using our number variable as an example, we would set our number variable in here. And then you can use the middle section where it says is equal to, to change that to, for example, is not equal to, is greater than, um, or is less than, and there's multiple other options for you. But the next choose a value box is where you're going to set the value you want to stop at. And essentially the condition that we would have then is the actual value is equal to the value that we want to stop at. So using our number example, let's say we've got our number variable in there and our number variable currently sits at one and we want to stop at the value of two. We we'll say, okay, number variable of one is equal to the value of two. No, it's not. We're going to run the actions then. And then we're going to come back and then we're going to, let's say increment that and add plus one to that number variable to, so it's two. And then we'll have in our actual value would be two and then it is equal to, and then our stop value would be two. So our condition would be true and we would no longer run any sets of actions and we would come out of the do until action and continue with our flow. So the add an action section allows you to add actions that will be run against each item until the condition is true. Now, let's take a look at the advanced settings then. So you've got the edit in advanced mode. Now this allows you to write as an expression. If you'd prefer to write as a function or an expression, as you would normally do in the expression section on Power Automate, you can do so with this rather than using the box section. You can also change the limits of how many times the do until runs. Now let's say we was using our number example and we didn't actually iterate. So our number always remained as one and then it said is equal to two. Well, it's never going to go to two that that that's never going to be true because number one is always going to be one and is equal to two we're going to just keep running in an infinite loop so we have limits the default limit is 60 so it allows you to run 60 times but this allows you to change your maximum run count so for example if you wanted to run 120 times you would just select change limits and change 60 to 120. So let's take a look at this on Power Automate then. Okay, so I'm on Power Automate. I've got my do until flow created and I have a manual trigger. 
what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to use the same example that we just went through. So I'm going to create a number variable, set it to integer and create an initial value of one. So now we have a variable of number that is a value of one. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go into control and then add do until. Now this is the do until box that we've just gone through. So obviously we need our actual value. So I'm going to pass in the number variable. So at the moment, obviously the value is one. So if we read it like this, does one is equal to something. So one is equal to what? Let's say three. If one is equal to three, we're going to stop this loop. If not, we're going to run a set of actions. So let's add an action. So we talked about iteration. So if we go into the variable section, we've got increment variable. So essentially we can increment our variable by a value. If we select number and then set one, what's going to happen then is we're going to come into this do until after our variables created, we're going to have our number of one. Is it equal to three? No, it's not. Let's run this action. This action is going to add one to the number. Then the do until is going to kick off again. The number is then going to be two and it's going to say, okay, is two equal to three? No, it's not. Run the actions again. And then we've got the increment variable adding one to it. So then our number of two becomes three. And then we're going to say, is three equal to three? Yes, it is. Stop and then that will stop the loop for the do until. So let's save this and actually run it to see if the desired outcome works. So let's just go manual run, run flow. Okay, so our flow ran successfully. We created a number variable with initial value of one. And as you can see here, we've only got two iterations of it because we've come into here said, is one equal to three? No, it's not. Let's add a number. Cool. So then we're going, does two equal to three? Nope. Run the actions again, add a number. And then on the next one, the third one, we've gone, does three equal to three? Well, it does. So the answer is true. So then we don't run the actions anymore. And we've essentially finished our do until action. So let's take a look at this in a bit more complexity with um, some Dataverse actions. So we'll keep this uh, number here so that we can see what number we're actually iterating through and we can see how many times we've gone through it. But what we're gonna do first then is add a list rows action from Dataverse. And I've created a names example. It has four names in it. It has Joe, Jax, Sarah, and Meg. So I'm just going to grab all of these because I know there's only four coming back. So there's going to be a warning come up saying that, hey, you're going to pull um, loads and loads of rows potentially. Just be careful. But I've only got four in there, so I don't have to worry about that. And then in the do until, what I'm going to say is I'm going to pass in the output of this name but I need to get the first one. So what I can do then is I can just write first and then pass in the value. Now that's going to give me the value of the first uh, record com coming back. However, I can delete this first section. So I've got my body value come back of the output I can then open up a square brackets and what I can do is I can pass my number into there. So as we're incrementing, and if you're a pro dev and you've used a for loop before, this would, this would be essentially you using an I++ and you passing through the I. But for those of you that are not pro devs, essentially what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we've got a list of um, rows come back which there will be four, we're going to pass in the number variable 
to say in this square box at the end of the output to say give me whatever number um, the variable is set to. So initially it's going to be one. So it's going to say grab the first one then and then we need to then just select the um, name. So I know that the name is CR 069 underscore name. So we're grabbing the name field. So essentially we're saying of all this list, the variable number is one. So grab the first one and then grab the name field. So I'm going to copy this so that we can actually see it reproduced. And then I'm going to say when this is equal to Meg, we're going to stop. Now in here, I'm going to add an action and I'm going to add a compose and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass in this expression that we created just so that you can see the output. Now if we did the expression here we're going to add plus one to the variable so our expression in here would may mean that the variable that we're passing through to get the number, i.e. the first record or the second record or the third record or the fourth record, is going to change. So we need to make sure that we set this compose before we increment. So let's say Joe was the first one. This initial run will pass Joe, then add plus one to the number, and then we'll run through again, and then we'll say, okay, does the second row name equal to Meg? No. Let's run through. Let's just display it here. Let's add plus one to the variable of number and then come back in here and say, okay, does the name, which could be Jack's at this particular point, the third name equal to Meg? No, it doesn't. Then you would cycle through and then the fourth name may be Meg. And then it's, uh, that's essentially how you can use a variable, a number variable to iterate through uh, a particular record. So let's actually see this in action then. So there's our warning. Let's just click run. Okay, so we've created an initial number variable called one. We then have grabbed a load of um, records back of which there are four. And then we've cycled through. Now, what's happened then is we've got Sarah come back as our first one. And we have a number of one being added. Okay, so Sarah is not equal to Meg. Let's go on to the next one. Then we've gone into Jax. Okay, does Jax equal to um, Meg? No, it doesn't. Let's add a plus one. And then on the third one, Meg has come back. So we've stopped and we've not run any of these actions. Now, the reason why Joe doesn't show up is because when you get a list back from uh, the list rows, you get an array and an array starts at a base of zero. So starting with a value of one would mean that you would lose the first record. So you should always start at a value of zero if you're iterating through an array of items. And that is how you use do until to cycle through data as well as react to data on Power Automate. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.